Hey, we're in the uh, Jack Gore Bagall unit of Big Thicket National Preserve in East Texas. Behind me is the Natchez River and uh, a lot of the uh, alluvial deposition from the river. You can see the sands all back through here. There's huge sandbars. They're almost like sand dunes that are associated with this, this river. Um, behind me on this side is the fill bank and over on that side is the cut bank. You can see how the cut bank has a, a steep drop off and that's where all the trees are falling into the river. As the river comes through here, it cuts that side out and it deposits all of the uh, alluvial uh, sediment on this side of the river. We're in a um, what's referred to as a bagel in the Jack Gore Bagel unit of Big Thicket National Preserve. Behind me you can see the water. This water's um, it's clear but it's really tea tea colored clear because of all the tannins from the uh, the debris that drops from the trees and it sits here all year long and uh, just kind of seeps out and it makes a kind of a tea water. You can also see the cypress knees all back there in the the slough itself that uh, serve the purpose of uh, helping the trees get oxygen in the root system as well as stabilizing these really large cypress trees to keep from falling over in this really wet soil. Uh, it's, it's wet here most of the year. Um, we're in a, uh, this particular year I'm out here is a really dry year, about 12 inches below um, average rainfall. But you can see that there's still water in this uh, bagel, in this little area behind me. Uh, it's quite dried up. Where I'm standing now should be uh, several feet. I should be about hip deep in water, but I'm I'm not uh, because of it's it's mostly dried up. The uh, tupelo trees are the ones you can see that have. Let's take a look at the leaves. The big broad leaves. You see those big uh, broad leaves up here. These are tupelo trees that are mixed in with the cypress trees, and that's uh, they refer to these as uh, tupelo gum or Tupelo gum swamps, tupelo gum sloughs, a variety of names like that. And we're only um, oh, uh, half a mile from the Natchez River, and often in the springtime this area floods from the water from the Natchez. This particular year it's, it's really low though. Down in this uh, Tupelo Slough, the Cypress Tupelo Slough, you can see the uh, the Cypress knees all back in here, and the the base of these trees. How how large the base of these Tupelo trees are. The uh, the water down here is really really tannic. It's uh, let's see if I can see the, if you can see that. It's clear yet um, black like like tea and this is an old uh, part of the Natchez River bed it's a one of the meanders that's left over from uh, where the it's, it's a cutoff meander from where the river used to flow through this direction and now it's it's cut off from the river but it's still full of water and every year when it floods this fills up with water and uh, it, it just replenishes it and then it sits here all year with uh, the tannins from all these trees and turns the river a really dark black to the point where they call this a black creek. Thank you. 
found ourselves in a cypress swamp. This is referred to as, as John's Lake. And it's an old, um, it's an old meander off of the Natchez River. It's um, really low water level right now. You can see by these trees, the, the water level should be up in here. And uh, all behind me, let me see if I can turn around a little bit. All behind me, you can see the water level of these, uh, not the water level, but the, the water marks on these trees back here. The water should probably be another four to eight feet higher than what it is right now. Uh, it's because the, this part of East Texas, uh, the year that I'm filming this, is in a pretty significant drought. And normally in the springtime like this, all of this would be several feet underwater and you could get around anywhere in a boat. Right now it's probably only, uh, let's see, um, it's just inches deep. It's uh, not, not much deeper than my paddle. And we're barely kind of getting through here and bumping on logs and kind of paddling off the bottom and pushing through the, the mud and the sediment. But we're going to try to go out the other direction uh, from where we started and see if we can get out to the Natchez River from here because all of this should connect. And a long time ago when I was out here, you were able to get through it, but right now we can't. So we're going to go out the other way and see what happens. Uh, confluence of the Natchez River and uh, Oxbow Lake that we just paddled out of. So on this side of the river on our right is a classic cut bank. You can see I'm moving. I'm not even paddling. Moving pretty quickly down the river. You can see how the water is kind of stirred up. It's flowing pretty well through here. And that whole bank over there, you can see how it's cutting into it. The river's constantly cutting into it. It is uh, also making the trees fall down and those trees eventually get swept downstream. On the opposite side of the river though is the fill bank. This is the side that's got a nice sandy uh, beach over here and you can see the, the smaller trees have filled in behind the sand. So this, what will happen eventually is this whole sandbar on the left hand side will be covered with trees and over here on the right hand side the the river will continue to eat away at the at the trees until the river you know slowly slowly moves over and you know these trees like like this you can see the root systems of these being uh, eaten away over time and then you get you know trees like this uh, cypress tree are falling down Here's the remnants of some other tree right here. You can see here how quickly we're moving through this water. Not even paddling on uh, this relatively still river. At least what a lot of people in other places call still water. Here on the, uh, oh, hang on a second. There. Didn't want to run into that. Um, they call these, refer to them as still water rivers, even though the, the water's not still at all. It's uh, the Natchez River in East Texas, and we're in the, the lower end of the, uh, the Jack Gore Bagal unit just outside of Johns Lake. 